Hi everyone and welcome back to the London Watch Collector channel. If you've just tuned in to my channel, I'm a watch collector, a watch enthusiast, I'm basically addicted to watches. And on my channel, I'll be sharing my passion for watches using 4K content. I'll be discussing and showing you brilliant timepieces ranging from Seiko to Patek Philippe. So guys, if you enjoy my reviews, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure to click on the notification bell and follow me on Instagram. So guys, this week we have an exciting one. It's a Patek Philippe. It's a steel watch. And it's going to be a special one for me because believe it or not, guys, this is my first ever dress watch that I buy. If you've been following me on the channel for the last couple of years, you know I'm all into steel watches. And to be specific, it's more of the sports steel watches. And the reason for that is, as I mentioned in my earlier videos, it's just my lifestyle. I'm hardly in a suit, probably once every two years or so. And when I did the Q&A session a couple of months ago, I mentioned to you guys that I'm looking to pull the trigger on my first dress watch and I had my eye on the JLC Reverso. I did try it on and for some reason I did not feel ready yet. I do love the brand, I do love the style, the classic design, but the shape was a bit too slim for my wrist. It just looked a bit odd when I put it on my wrist. So I decided not to go for it, maybe explore other references and see what they come up in the near future. And then a couple of months down the line I get the call from my AD telling me that this watch is available if I'm I'm still interested in it. And it took me a split second to decide, although it is a dress watch, it's hardly gonna see wrist time, but I'm gonna give it a go, give it a try, and try to fit it into my lifestyle, play around with the straps, try to somehow make it more of a sporty look that I could wear it actually with t-shirts, shorts, jeans, etc. Initially, I wanted to film the full vlog, but with this whole pandemic, it's awkward enough that you have to have your face covered, you can't see the person you're talking to. So I thought I'm not gonna vlog buying this watch, let things improve, and then I'll continue doing the vlogs. But stay tuned for the future purchases, I'll make sure to vlog those ones. So as always, we'll be starting with the box and show you everything that comes with the watch. And I must say, with all the unboxing of the different brands that I own, it has to be Patek Philippe, that get the ultimate satisfaction feeling when it comes to unboxing. It's these small little details that they do, the quality of their boxes, the scent that hits you the moment you open the box. It definitely has to be my number one brand when it comes to luxury. Once you open up the leather pouch, you're presented with a couple of things, which includes the tag with your article number or reference number, which is the 5212A-001, the MB, which is your case number, as well as your movement number, removing the catalogs and the documents, Starting with the Patek Philippe Museum, it's actually a brochure telling you all about the museum in Geneva, including the pricing, what to expect, etc. The next booklet, which is the Collector's Library, tells you all about the books they have. I have bought a couple of books, added it to my book collection, and I must say, even their books, when it comes to the quality, the images, the finish, it's just spectacular. Finally, the weekly calendar booklet. gives you all the specification about the movement, how to set the watch, including the day, the date, and the week, as well as telling you the number of weeks for all the years up to the year 2060, which hopefully by then this watch would be probably with my grandson. And this is what Patek is about. As the slogan says, you don't really own a Patek Philippe, you merely look after it for the next generation. Moving to the last but not least, the most important paper or document, the one-time issued certificate of origin, which if you lose, there is no replacement whatsoever. Once again, it gives you the reference number, the movement number, as well as the caliber number. At the bottom, you have the color of the dial, the case, the bracelet, and the number of jewels when it comes to the movement.
So guys, with the watch revealed, I'm gonna cover a bit of specs. Starting with the reference number, as I mentioned, it's a 5212A-001. So this watch was introduced in Basel 2019 and it marks a new complication for the very first time to Patek Philippe and they wanted to make it more special so they introduced it in stainless steel. So as you can see from the dial, this is a complication so called as a weekly calendar whereby it has a couple of displays which is the current week as you can see there at the 7 o'clock with a nice hint of red and they've integrated the weeks and the month so 31 weeks gives you an indication that it's the last week of July as well as the first week of August as you can see there indicated nicely at seven o'clock in addition to the week and the month it gives you the day and the date. So looking at the watch now you can tell it it's Thursday the 30th of July and this watch was actually aimed or made for the modern businessman. Being a businessman, they'll expect him to be in a suit all the time. Having it in steel, it's more versatile, a bit underrated, very light on the wrist. So it becomes an everyday wearer going on travels during meetings. You need the whole weekly calendar, the day and the date, as well as the month. So it is definitely a tool watch made for the modern businessman or someone who's in a suit in a conference room has meetings every single day of the week etc saying all that contradicts my lifestyle but end of the day a submariner is made to be a dive watch but nowadays we use it more of a, a desk diver watch so nothing is stopping us enjoying those tool watches as watches that you wear for different occasions the dial you see the off-white dial or as Patek likes to call it as a silvery opaline I feel the color just matches the watch perfectly giving you that extra legibility when it comes to the numbers when it comes to the numerals everything is just crystal clear so easy to read even from a distance and they've used black and gold applied hour markers with two buttons in the middle marking the 12 o'clock the case you see is made out of steel it has a sapphire crystal at the front and the back a water resistance of 30 meters which let's face it guys this watch would never see the water in its life due to the main fact that it's on a leather strap and of course being a dress watch the diameter of the watch is 40 millimeters and the height is 10.79 millimeters if you're wondering how thick that means, it's a bit thicker compared to my Aquanaut travel time, the 5164, which measures around 10.2 millimeters. But by all means, this is not a thick watch at all, especially for all the complication it has. The strap, which I must say guys, is my least favorite feature of this watch. It's a calfskin hand-stitched light brown prong buckle. I feel that Patek Philippe should have had the other buckle just like they do with their other dress watches. The quality of the strap wasn't the best, it was a bit thin, it wasn't even made out of crocodile, it's calf skin. The movement is the caliber 26330SCJSE. That's a mouthful, it's basically a self-winding with the Patek Philippe seal. The diameter of the movement is 27 millimeters. the height is a 4.82 millimeters. The number of parts is 304. The number of joules is 50. The power reserve is 35 to 45 hours. The central rotor is 21 karat gold, which is a unidirectional winding. The balance is a gyro max. The semi oscillation is a 28,800 beats per hour, which is basically 4 hertz, giving you a better sweep compared, to, for example, to my 5712, which is 3 hertz or 21,600. The balance spring is a Spiromax, the hallmark is a Patek Philippe seal. Another feature that I really liked is the font they've used on the watch. It's more of a handwritten font and my favorite feature is the number seven, the way they write number seven because that's the way I write it. I've always written the letter Z or the number seven with the cross through the middle. Moving on to how to set the watch, if you pull it out to the first position you'll be able to set the date moving the crown clockwise as you can see there, 
pushing the pusher at seven o'clock would change the day of the week, which is the sub dial in the center, as you can see there with the tip red hand. At the same time, you'd see the week changing as it jumped from week 31 to week 32. Every time it moves from Sunday to Monday, that would change the week as well. As you can see, it just moved to 33. The pusher at 10 o'clock would make you jump the week directly. As you can see there, in case you misset it, you can just do that directly or you have the week correction, which is every couple of years, you can just do that by the pusher at 10 o'clock. Just for fun, I'm going to put all the hands exactly at 12 o'clock and I'm going to hack the movement exactly at 12. This watch is definitely going to be in a watch winder just because setting it is actually going to be a headache every time it stops but guys without further ado let's go ahead with the wrist shot And there you go, guys. That's the Patek Philippe Calatrava weekly calendar in stainless steel. What do you guys think? This is my first ever dress watch and probably the beginning of many to come. And I feel it just sits perfectly in the collection. I don't have an off-white dial. It's different from the white that I have when it comes to the Daytona or the Grand Seiko. And of course, not to mention it's a dress watch, not a sports watch. I hope you enjoyed this review. That's all for this week. Thank you for watching.